uh, I added one more line in the code. So just plot uh, some of these uh, circles along a straight line. So yes, we see after you know, time equals one, we get uh, the steady state solution quite nicely. So, uh, but it took a long, long time. So if we now start to playing around with delta t and see if we can make it uh, faster, that looks okay. How far can we go? What's the limit? What's the stability limit here? Now, if you can recall our stencil, it looked something like this. Jn plus 1 equals number n multiplied with 1 minus 2r plus r multiplied with uh, j plus 1 and j minus 1. <coughs> That's the stencil. Uh, to teach you a very quick and dirty uh, way to investigate the stability. How big a uh, time step can you have here before it explodes? Time step that's inside the R, that's delta T by delta Y square. You have something called positive coefficient method. Look at the coefficients for all the neighbors uh, we need to calculate him. I mean, he is given by a number of, uh, of uh, unknowns here, three. And if you add all the coefficients of all these uh, unknowns together, what do you get? Here you have one coefficient, it's called 1 minus 2r. Then these two, they have the same coefficient. That's an r for both of them. The sum equals 1. Okay, that's the sort of a first demand uh, that we need to use the following method of positive uh, coefficients. If the sum of all these coefficients is 1, then we could have uh, sort of invented here a minimum and a maximum value. If you s just uh, write it on the form, the, mi the minimum, uh, say the smallest one, uh, are identical. All of them are the smallest one. Then multiply with the sum of the coefficient, wi which is 1. Okay, then uh, he can't possibly be any smaller than the smallest. No way that, uh, uh, that's going to happen. Same goes the other way. If you say all of these have now the value of the maximum, what's the biggest one that he can be? Well, that's the same. So given that the coefficient, the sum of the coefficient is 1, and an upside down a, meaning for all coefficients, bigger or equal to zero, th if, this, uh, if this is the case, then this guy, the new one that we are seeking, he is going to be bounded. He is going to lie between the biggest and the smallest. Everything else is impossible. So, so uh, it's a very crude stability criteria, but it's so easy. And actually, the first demand, the sum of the coefficient equals 1, happens uh, quite frequently. So uh, it's very easy to use it, and it can be used quite, uh, quite frequently. So what's the demand here? Well, <coughs> the sum was 1, so that's OK. All coefficients positive. Well, these are themselves. They are, of course, positive quantities. But here is the question. That one has to be positive. So if this one has to be the case, my r has to be smaller or equal one half. This method, the method of positive coefficients, it's a very crude one. It's not uh, uh, giving you the precise uh, stability criteria. So uh, normally we differ with something is called uh, sufficient criteria then you could use it and you would be dead certain if, uh, if, if you uh, 
fulfill the criteria, you're going to get a solution. It could still be stable if you violated the sufficient criteria. Uh, the precise criteria, that's what's called a necessary criteria. So we didn't differ between uh, sufficient and necessary. So this method, very crude, very simple, can only provide you with, with uh, uh, sufficient criteria. Let's see the value of our R here. Uh, he's point 0.4. So yes, we are just in uh, the vicinity of the stability limit. Let's modify him to be uh, precisely <coughs> on the limit. Now R should be uh, 0.5. Let's see what happens. <coughs> yeah, he's stable. And he finds the steady state at time one, as he should. No problem. And we have the R value, 0.5. Now we go a little bit above. A little bit above. I can remove this one so we get the R out there. <coughs> We're allowed to do that. Doesn't seem to have any problems with that one. So, a little bit over. Okay, that was okay. But, of course, we haven't gone much over. Let's go a little bit more over. 1, 2, 6 instead of 1, 2, 5. <coughs> well, it starts out nicely. But... Strangely enough, he runs into problems. And if you continue there, it's not much over, a little bit over. So clearly, what I found here was not a bad idea. Not only the sufficient, but it, it is for this example actually also the necessary stability criteria. It's actually quite precise. So uh, we have to stay above uh, one half to keep it stable. And also, if I did I say go a little bit more over and use a pause, you can see a little bit strange actually. You sort of get a waggling uh, concept here. Ah, it was too crude. Sorry. Let's go back to the one I had. <coughs> one, two, six. I just wanted to show you something. Mm, it's still busy. <coughs> here. So here it actually looks okay. We are a little bit above the stability limit. We, uh, it's going to explode, but he doesn't really do it in the beginning. Strangely enough, because one might think that we start almost at a singularity. We have zero velocity and then all of a sudden one. So this sudden jump here, shouldn't that one sort of ignite any uh, instabilities and make it explode quite rapidly up here? But no, he starts out quite nicely. And then, <coughs> uh, I have to remove this pause, it's uh, impossible. You see, he explodes only after a while. It takes some time. <coughs> so it's not from the boundaries, actually, where he gets in, into trouble. It's uh, sort of in the middle. Uh, I have no explanation for it. I just think it weird. Uh, I think it weird. Uh, it should start, sort of explode close to the boundaries. And that's my normal experience. I don't know if you have any explanation why he explodes in the center. I don't know. No? <coughs> Strange. Okay. <coughs> what about um, the correct solution here? If we uh, want to compare this one with uh, the analytical solution of our problem. And here, yes, 
we have the possibility to find an analytical solution for this problem. Um, and uh, you have actually been given the solution and it looks something like this. Here actually it's uh, two different solutions, two different analytical solutions. <coughs> You need a time here, and then I have a, a series uh, of sine waves. So this is from a Fourier uh, a series, um, ending up with a velocity large u. That should be analytical. 15 terms should be accurate. Another uh, solution is given by adult function. <coughs> adult function, complementary here given, uh, well, you have to scale the argument a little bit. You find these solutions in your exercise uh, 4, which has just been open for you. So it should be here somewhere, where you then are going to deal with uh, the uh, cuvette flow problem. And yes, you have been given them here. Also, you have been given a cuvette.m file where these are programmed, so uh, you don't have to do it yourself. So the cuvette.m you find here in your exercise. So here I just uh, hard copy them uh, into my script, and then I plot my own velocity here, and then red circles for the first uh, analytical solution, green pluses for the second one. Let me plot them together and just see how they look. <coughs> I'll remove that one and write pause. <coughs> so that's the first uh, time step. The numerical, uh, no, sorry, the analytical solution seems to agree. My first one is not so good up there, of course. Not so easy to, to fit the correct solution. But here you now should see quite nice time development. Although now, as you can see here, I have violated the stability criteria. This is going to explode. I am above one half. So at least in the beginning, it looks OK. But if you continue here, no, it's not going to be that nice. At least now you see the analytical solutions. They should uh, agree. And uh, with our solution, yeah, well, if you use a smaller uh, R, stable, uh, choose a, a stable delta T, then you should get the correct solution as well. <coughs> okay, any questions to that one? Good. Yeah, we can skip that one. Let's do another problem. <coughs> it's the same uh, one-dimensional diffusion equation, as we call it. But now, du dt equals and then I use a constant plus double derivative with respect to y. What's this constant? Well, now I switch from a cuvette flow to a Poisson flow. Now I have two walls, both of them are steady. And my coordinate system is in the center. So y will now go from 
minus 1 to plus 1. So we have to change that. And uh, the k here is of course now the driving force in the problem, meaning inside here you either have a pressure gradient, larger pressure to the left and to the right to push the fluid through, or it could be gravity. You need a driving force for this uh, problem. What about uh, our uh, recipe? Well, actually, the one we have up here should be uh, quite okay, shouldn't it? The only difference is one additional constant. So here I sort of have written it uh, in a non-dimensional uh, way, the same way as we did with the with the quet flow. But now I should have a poor say flow. So the solution, steady state solution, laminar flow should then be something like this, a nice uh, parabola. Okay, let's see if we can uh, make that happen. <coughs> so let's save this one as something else. We call it uh, Poiseuil. <coughs> then also I remove these uh, analytical solutions. <coughs> like that. Up here I need some uh, k or something. dy must be 2 divided by j max minus 1. Linear space goes from minus 1 to 1. That should be okay. I have a same r and I have a big k which I now give the value of 2. Why do I do that? What's the steady state solution here? Well, <coughs> for the cuvette flow, we knew the solution, the steady state, uh, as time goes to infinity. What about this one? Well, we really don't know, do we? We have to solve the problem. This one equal to 0, double derivative equal to uh, minus k. What's uh, the solution? Well, you will have uh, actually now ordinary derivatives, du dy equal minus ky plus c1. Well, that one is going to be 0 in the center if y equals uh, 0, hence c1, this constant, is going to be 0. Then you can integrate once more and you find the solution u equals minus one half k y square plus a second constant. That one is going to be zero if you're on the boundaries y equals plus minus one. So either one you choose to, say, uh, to insert here, you'll find the same c2 equals k half. Okay, and then you know also the maximum value of u. That will happen when you are in the center, y equals zero. So maximum velocity is k half. So I choose k equal to two. Then I know the maximum uh, velocity should be one. <coughs> what about our uh, recipe here? The recipe that we had, that was from uh, the uh, cuvette. I didn't have the k. Now I want a k as well. How sh will he uh, turn out? Well, you just have to add him here somewhere. Big k multiplied with uh, delta t only. He should not be multiplied with, uh, with um, 1 over delta y square. So that's all. <coughs> Then we have the driving force into our problem. And now let's see what happens. Well, we have to scale this one a little bit. We can uh, plot him, yes. Plot uh, u versus y, that's okay. But 
he's going to scale himself all the time so I have to scale for him so uh, I want the x-axis <coughs> that's the velocity to go from 0 to 1 y can go from minus 1 no sorry from yeah from minus 1 to 1 let's see if this one runs <coughs> Ah, still paused. First uh, time step. Start with zero and zero, and something has just uh, started to happen in the center region. <coughs> yeah, doesn't look too stupid, does it? How? the flow should now evolve in time. So let us stop this one. Remove the pause and let him run free. <coughs> so the steady state solution should be maximum velocity equals to one. So he should just kiss the right uh, boundary and uh, actually he didn't. This line we should remove. That's this one. So uh, we are not entirely happy with this one, are we? Well, <coughs> here I've chosen uh, the maximum time. Uh, with the time scale uh, given, doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah, it should be non-dimensionalized the same way, I think. Uh, yes, it should. But clearly, we cannot find the steady state within the time scale of one. So, but remember the scale here, that's sort of an order of magnitude. So when I say most of the physics is going to happen at a time scale of one, yes, that's true. But uh, maybe not completely the entire dynamics. So here actually I had to increase that one a little bit. Now let's try to increase also the time step. See what happens. <coughs> That's more like it. <coughs> so there he actually just kissed the uh, right uh, axis. And now the uh, R I've gotten is one half. The stability uh, analysis should actually be the same. Let's try. Go a little bit above. <coughs> 0 0.005 goes to 0 0.0051. Hey, he crashed. And also again, strangely enough, it happens when he sort of almost have, has found the steady state solution. Then he decided to be unstable. I don't know why. So uh, it can be tedious. Uh, to find the error in such codes when they seems to be running nicely for a long, long, long time and all of a sudden they decide to, to blow up, to explode. That can be, uh, can be tricky. So again, yes, we can believe our uh, steady state, uh, no, sorry, our stability analysis seems to be working nicely. <coughs> Any questions to this uh, Kuwait problem? Okay, let us uh, stop by turning this one into a two-dimensional problem. Should that be possible? Yeah, I think so. Instead of uh, y, I will now have x and y. 
so I have now a square duct of uh, going from minus 1 to plus 1 in both x and the y direction. So finding uh, uh, coordinates here, I use mesh grid like that. And they should now go from minus 1 with step uh, delta y to plus 1 in both directions. There we have our uh, mesh grid. <coughs> What do we have? <coughs> what do we have to change down here? Well, <coughs> I need another dimension, don't I? So uh, we have to use uh, for i equals two uh, i maximum. So that means I have two indices here for my velocities, i and j. So that has to be copied to all of them, i, j, and also here, i, comma, j plus 1, i, comma, j minus 1. All the way up here, I now need uh, i max as well as j max. Of course, I make it easy here for myself. I could use only uh, J max, put them equal to each other, should be okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but here I am now missing a dimension, don't I? <coughs> so uh, K dot times delta T is supposed to be there. Here I will have now uh, 1 minus 2 times r, and then I have the neighbors here. Now I'm going to have two more neighbors, because I also get a double derivative in the y direction. That means this 2 is going to be a 4, and these two neighbors is going to have two more neighbors, but then in the i direction, so I write it like this, and say i minus 1 and i plus 1. <coughs> That's all. <coughs> I have the double derivative in both x and y, so I have all four neighbors here in the y direction, here in the x direction, and here the center point minus 4. That's it. Then I want to plot it, and I can't really plot it like that, so I use a surface. Surf. X, Y, U. I don't need the axis. <coughs> so now let's see if that one works. Mm, not that easy, no. Um, what did we do wrong here? <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that shouldn't be too wrong, should it? I is ah. There is the arrow. <coughs> I can't go all the way up to I maximum. That was one too, too many. Only the internal points. <coughs> wee, wee, wee. That was fancy. Let's have a closer look at that one. So this now is the first time step, uh, so the velocity is not too big, so the entire uh, inner field, you might say, has been given a little velocity. 
then the next time step, and the next one. Ah, seems to be developing nicely, but then something starts to happen from the corners. And clearly, yes, this is going to be unstable. Why? I have the uh, stability uh, in hand, uh, don't I? Uh, but no. Here it was sum of the coefficient equals 1. Now I have changed it a little bit, haven't I? Well, I have to crash the code. The sum of the coefficients should be 1. Here I have one coefficient, it's called 1 minus 4r. Here I have 4 times of the coefficient r. Hence, the sum of the coefficient is 1. Should be okay. But the next amount saying all coefficient positive. Ah, then 1 minus 4r has to be positive, meaning r has to be smaller than not 1 half, but 1 fourth. There is the problem. So we change delta t to 25 instead of 5. Now it should be stable. Yeah, and he develops quite nicely. So you can flip him around if you like. You see he's symmetric on both x and y axis. Looks quite nicely. <coughs> so a uh, velocity parabola. So if you want the animation faster, remove the pause and run him like that. <coughs> so no problem to jumping into two dimension, three dimension, four dimension, really doesn't matter. When you have an explicit equation system, very easy, uh, explicit scheme, sorry, very easy to do the programming. Everything is known on the right hand side, you just update the values, doesn't cost you anything. So uh, these types of uh, Partial differential equations, very easy to solve. Next time I'm going to show you how this one can also can be solved using something built in in MATLAB. <coughs> we have something called PDP. <coughs> PDP. That is if you have installed the toolbox covering partial differential equations. So uh, I'm not going to do this uh, today, we don't have time, but I'm going to peek into it uh, next time. So here you can actually solve quite nasty partial differential equations using something built in inside MATLAB. You have to uh, write some uh, functions uh, to make it work, but uh, one, if you've done it uh, one or two times it shouldn't be too hard. Another thing I want to address is uh, the time uh, discretization that we have done here in these FTCS schemes, first order in time. How accurate is it? You are doing tens of thousands of time steps and it's only first order accurate. Of course you have an error there and if you do 10,000 errors, don't you accumulate up a big error? I mean, with the QET flow, we had an analytical solution actually to sort of see the time development and uh, they followed quite nicely actually. So uh, here, let's say if we stop not at T max equals 1, but say T max equals 0.2. Ah, he's on pause here, sorry. Remove that one. <coughs> uh, even point 0.2 was a little bit too much. Say point 0.1. So remove this one. <coughs> Now time is 0.1, so uh, we are sort of 
in the middle of um, some acceleration here, s uh, things are still changing. Uh, of course, here I'm still on the example. I have a little bit too high uh, uh, delta t, but never mind that. My question is, you do a lot of time step to get here. Don't you accumulate error? And it's only the first order uh, method. So why use a first order method? We have other methods available. We have ODA A45 built in in MATLAB, fourth order accurate. Can't we use that one in time? Yes, we can. We're going to do that next time. Any uh, questions from you? <coughs> then we stop here.